live and local. Starring Cam McGinnis, Matthew Basgall, David Petron, Michael Turner, Jared Moss, Gabe Warwick, Brooke Merchant. Live was not actually live, only live during shooting. Hello, welcome to Live and Local, where we're local but not really live. I am this week's host, Jaron Moss. We have a great show for you today. This episode will focus on the international cultures here on campus and in Hayes. Specifically, we will focus on the international students on campus. We have an inside look of what our international students go through to get here and some festivals that are celebrated on campus. Fort Hayes State University has partnerships with different colleges all over the world and in more than 20 different countries, from Bangladesh to Vietnam and the majority of them in China. One can only imagine what it would be like to go to a school on the other side of the world, and that process would even begin to look like. That's why we talked to Carol Soloko Olaf, the Director of International Student Services, and got an inside look at what our international students have to go through even before they make it out here on campus. My name is Carol Sokowalaf and I'm Director of International Student Services and I have been working with international students at Fort Hayes for about 28 years. Uh, my job as director is primarily I'm in charge of all of the immigration paperwork that the students need to apply for visas once they get admitted to the university. And so since they are here on student visas there's a lot of um, immigration requirements that the students have to follow that obviously domestic students don't have to follow to be able to stay in the U.S. to complete their studies. So my role is to, to make sure that students arrive uh, on time, get enrolled in classes, uh, and then we have what's called the SEVA system, which is the um, immigration system that monitors what their majors are, if they're enrolled, um, if they have uh, the benefit of applying for like curricular practical training or a work experience or optional practical training. Um, my office works with all of those immigration requirements to, again, keep the students here legally in the U.S. for the duration of their studies. A variety of ways that we have international students obviously at Fort Hayes and one of them is our cross-border program where we have students who are studying both at CIOS International University in Shenzhen and Shenyang University in Shenyang, China. And the cross-border program, uh, primarily those students apply just like a regular international student would um, to Fort Hayes. They're admitted and then they will take coursework uh, at their campus in either CIOS or Shenyang. We have faculty from Fort Hayes who teach those classes there. So they will take uh, a number of Fort Hayes credits. We also use the, the Chinese credits that they are gaining also from their um, home institution. And when they finish their program, they will get a bachelor's degree from Fort Hayes State University. Some of them may also be getting a Chinese degree, so we would call that a dual degree program. So for our students who want to come to campus, there are some additional steps those students need to follow. And one of them is that they need to provide a financial statement to, to show to Fort Hayes, but also to the U.S. consulate, that they can afford to come to the United States and study um, at a U.S. institution. So once we verify they're admissible to the university, they provide us a financial statement, they provide us language proficiency, because for some students English is not their first language. So we want to make sure that they are equipped with language skills so that when they come to campus they can be successful in their academic programs. So if they don't have language proficiency, they can actually come to campus, enroll in our English as a Second Language program, get their language skills they need, and then start their academic program. So for students to, to actually come to the U.S., then once they've met those requirements, we provide them a document called an I-20. And that document has that SEVIS number that I was talking about. So the students will pay a SEVIS fee um, to, to the government, uh, to the U.S. government, and then they will apply for their visa. And then the visa, there's also a visa fee that goes along with that. So the student will go to the American consulate, 
they will present their documents and the consulate will ask them some questions. Why do you want to go to the U.S.? Why have you chosen the school? How do you plan to fund your studies? What are your plans after you get your degree? So the student goes through this, as you can imagine, stressful process of talking to a consulate official in less than five minutes to have that individual convinced to give them a visa to come to the United States. So, you know, once they get the visa, then they start the process of, okay, I need to make my travel arrangements to, to Hayes um, and then to arrive in time for the semester to start. So there are other forms that we will send them indicating um, information that we will need for them when they arrive if they have a health immunization, um, records, or, or other things to, to bring with them when they come. And then we want to get travel information from them so we know when they're going to be arriving into Hayes. Um, and so we have the students actually come well before the regular students, probably a week before, because we have international student orientation. We do that for a reason because we want them to come early to get oriented, but we also want them to get used to Kansas time. Because for most of these students, they're coming from time zones that are 10 to 12 hours different than the United States. And so you can imagine coming to a new country, a new time zone, and if you had to start classes right away, it would be very difficult to, to get acclimated in that short amount of time. They will bring, hopefully, traditional items with them because we like them to go into the community and on campus to do programming. So if they have traditional clothing or they have things that help them feel more at home here at Fort Hayes, we want them to bring those things. Um, we talk about, you know, if there are big items like winter coats or things like that, you know, you can buy those when you get here. Uh, we also encourage them to go to the coat drive that the local dry cleaners have. Um, we encourage them also that there are, there's the ARC thrift shop, there are some stores where if they don't want to buy a brand new coat that they can get affordable clothes. Um, you know, here when they arrive. But primarily we want them to bring things that when they, when they come, you know, obviously clothes, but keeping in mind that they have typically two big bags and what's gonna be the most important things for them to bring to help them be at home and that maybe initially they don't have to, to buy a lot of things. They'll buy their books, they'll buy their school supplies, all of those things when they come, which are heavy. But primarily we just encourage them to bring things that are gonna help them um, you know, as, as they become a college student here. We, um, we make sure that they maintain their immigration status. Um, we have the International Student Union, which provides some uh, a student organization and provides activities for the students to get involved in because we want them to, to integrate and not just come to study. Probably one of the hardest things is getting students to, to take some time to, to do fun things because their, their parents and their family are spending a lot of money for them to come to the U.S., so they have the pressure of they need to do well academically. So the students tend to, to want to study all the time and not maybe do a lot of the things that normal college students do, like get involved in a student organization, go to athletic events, but we really feel that's important in that U.S. college experience. So our office encourages them to do that. We send weekly emails out to the student to remind them of these are some important dates that are coming up, these are activities you can get involved in. Um, we have a monthly newsletter that we send out to them. We do workshops. Um, we're doing a, a workshop this week and next week on optional practical training for students who will be graduating to explain to them if you want to work for a year after you graduate, this is the process, this is the paperwork you have to do. If you want to do an internship, um, curricular practical training is something that you can apply for. This is what the process is. Um, this is what you need to do in order to, to secure that. Um, we're going to have a, a writing workshop that we do, to, again, to help the students because if English isn't their first language, sometimes writing is difficult for them. Uh, we actually have an eight-week international seminar class that the students will be finishing in a couple of weeks. It's kind of an extended orientation where we go into more uh, in-depth on American culture and traditions. We talk about the American education system and their role in the American education system because at their home countries it's much different what their role is and what the expectations are. Um, we also um, have guest speakers who come in from the Student Health Center and they talk about the American healthcare system. 
we'll have someone come in and talk about Title IX and, and their rights uh, on campus uh, as any other American student has uh, in regards to you know, safety and how, how to protect themselves and, and, and each other. Um, so we really use this eight weeks to, to again, kind of to help them in that transition. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, they just have to come to class. So, and we found that to be pretty uh, effective in helping them feel more comfortable uh, in knowing what to expect. Uh, most of the students come from education systems where it's lecture-based. All they do is they come in, the faculty member lectures to them, they may take some notes, but they don't ask questions. In the American classroom is much different. Your teachers expect you to speak. Your teachers expect if they ask a question that you're going to answer the question. You're in small groups. And so a lot of those American um, educational things that domestic students are very used to, international students aren't. Um, and so it can be intimidating for them to be put into a group with American students when maybe they feel like their English isn't as good. Some of the challenges are we are a rural community and we're, we're a small community of 20,000, which quite honestly is an advantage because it's a safe community. But some students are used to um, cities of millions of people. So um, seeing um, a lot of landscape and not tall buildings um, is kind of a, a, a surprise for them. To see blue sky is a surprise for them. Um, and to not have the constant noise and the hustle and bustle that they normally would experience in a city um, is, is a surprise to them. But I think after they get used to it, they, they, they kind of like that quiet because it's very obviously conducive to studying, you know, if you're in a quiet environment. Um, the climate may be different for them. For some students, they've never seen snow. So when we have the first snow, that will be a new experience for them. Um, transportation. You know, um, it's better now than it was a number of years ago because we do have Uber, we have taxis. Um, you know, a number of years ago, we didn't have a lot of public transportation. And so for students, when they come, they don't have a car. So for them to, to get off campus, they have to get a bike or they walk. Now we do have Tiger Transport that runs three days a week. It's a free transportation um, system for really for anybody, uh, but it was initially implemented for our international students. So it runs Wednesday and Friday and Saturday from 2 until 7 o'clock. Sometimes the students will want to get a car. And, um, you know, driving in the U.S. is much different than driving in another country. You know, you have to follow the rules. And so, um, you know, we, we talk to them about driving in the U.S. as a privilege. You know, it's not a right. Not everybody has a driver's license. So I think some of those are, are sometimes adjustments for the students. Um, you know, and typically this time in the semester, um, uh, students are, because of the way the American education system is, they have a lot of assignments, they have tests, and so now they're getting into that period of time because we're getting close to midterms. So, you know, how that time management piece of I have all this reading to do and it's not in my first language and I've got all this writing and I'm spending all of this time, which is why we encourage the students to make American friends. Work on your English because the more you work on your English, the easier it becomes for you to listen to the lectures in class because early in the semester, the students are doing a lot of translating. So if you can imagine spending even 50 minutes in a class where you're translating everything from English to Chinese or Arabic or whatever the language is and back, how exhausting that is, you know, and then doing all the reading and the writing and the assignments. So I, I think that adjustment to the education system is also sometimes a challenge for the students because they're just not used to that, uh, the rigor of the reading and the writing and the language, quite honestly. International students are very interested in American culture. I mean, you know, um, but you have to understand that sometimes their image of America is what's portrayed in the media. So for international students, when they come, especially to the Midwest and to Hayes, they are very surprised how friendly people are. You know, because you walk across the quad and someone will say hello to you or they'll smile. And it's just something that um, they're just not used to. Um, 
but they want to get to know Americans. They want to practice their English. And they find it difficult to engage with American students because, you know, they feel like, um, you know, maybe their English isn't good enough to, to have that conversation, even though the majority of the time it is. But it's they're intimidated to, to reach out to make an American friend. And we really encourage them to do that because we want them to share their culture with the campus because quite honestly you know we are we are in a rural area and um, you know the diversity and the culture that our international students bring because we have students from like 29 different countries so if you can't study abroad or you know you don't travel a lot you have an opportunity to be exposed to different cultures and different people from different countries here on campus and so that's the reason why uh, in November we have International Education Week and we, we have the students do programming and we, we encourage not only the campus but the Hayes community to come because our international students bring culture to the Hayes community. And they go out to the schools and they speak to the young kids about their countries and, and the young children are very inquisitive, you know. Um, and, I, and the students like to answer questions about their country but I think when, when you get to the college age, even though I think our American students are interested, I think sometimes they don't want to offend our international students by asking them questions, you know, about your country, um, you know, what would you do for fun, what's your education system, what do you eat, you know, what are some of your traditions, just some of those things that I think Americans are curious about, but they just don't think to ask, quite honestly. Um, because the international students, you know, when, when they apply to come to campus to live in the resident halls, the number one thing they'll say is, I would like an American roommate because I want to work on my English and I want to learn about American culture. As you can see, there are a whole lot that our international students have to go through even before they make it here on campus. That's not to mention having to do all their work in another language. That just goes to show just how hardworking our international students are. Speaking of international students, um, we have Steven Su joining us tonight. He's a Chinese student in the informatics department with a passion for the festivals on campus that focus on China. Hey, Steven. So, yes. um, could you, I'm just going to get like, just so the people will know, um, can you please say how long you've been mm -hmm. in Kansas um, mm -hmm. and where you're from? Oh, I'm from China and uh, um, I came the, to the United States since last August. Okay. Uh, last August. So, um, what are some of the challenges that you face? Because you've only been here for two years. So, what are some of the challenges that you face since coming? For me, I think the first the challenge should be the mm, the language problem, because yeah. it's totally different. Yeah. Um, the second is the cultural differences. Um, are there any um, differences? Because do you, we're in China. Do you live like in a big city or? Um, like a smaller town? <coughs> Actually, uh, the city is similar, uh, uh, it's as same as the same as the city in, uh, in Kansas, okay. like Hayes. Hayes. Uh, but the people is too, yeah, too the people uh, too it's too a lot of people in China, in my city. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you please uh, tell me a little bit more about your involvement on campus with the different festivals that are? that take place? Oh yeah, <coughs> I was the president of the Chinese Student and Scholars Association. Um, I, uh, part, I organized uh, three events uh, which include the Dragon Dance Parade, uh, the Mid Autumn Festival, uh, the Spring Festival. Okay, uh, speaking about the festivals, can you please tell us a little bit more about um, the different ones that we celebrate here on campus? So I know you mentioned the Dragon um, dance? Yeah, uh, actually the dragon dance is not um, um, usually happen even in China. Uh, it's for the special day people want to celebrate. Uh, like uh, for the uh, our uh, new president Dr. Tisa Mason, we want to support her. Uh, in that special day we um, su support our uh, show our su support uh, in the dang dragon dance. Uh, also, um, in the, that special day, once um, one, uh, one is show our uh, Chinese culture. The second uh, is to 
to let more people to know the cultural differences, and then we can gather together. Yeah. Um, what are some of the um, cultural significance of the dragon dance? Because I know you said that it's not done like yearly in China. It's like when would it be done? Uh, you know, <coughs> in in China, <coughs> if you want to invite a dragon uh, in our custom, you need uh, to give them the uh, the the red color, uh, which uh, named uh, is is similar like a uh, tips. It's no need too much, just one dollar uh, after the dragon bag. That means we invite the dragon coming, and then we will send uh, him back. Gotcha, gotcha. That okay. kind of custom. Okay, um, and then you also mentioned the mid autumn festival. Yes, it's actually the mooncake festival. Okay. Uh, it's uh, for the people reunion together. It's the second uh, biggest uh, festival in China. Okay. Um, well, thank you for telling me a little bit about that. And I know later we have a video of your spring festival. Festival, festival that we'll show later. I also took some time this week to meet with another international student, Yu Chen Wang, a senior from China at FHSU State. She talked with me about her experiences adjusting to Kansas life as a student. Okay, um, my name is Yu Chen Wang. I was born in China. Um, currently, I'm living in Great Bend, Kansas. Um, the city I grew up is called Xi'an. Um, it's like in the middle of China, where terracotta soldiers come from. Uh, it's one of the oldest cities um, in China, um, also the biggest city in central China. Um, we have over 8 million people, so it's a huge difference than here um, in Kansas, in Hayes at least. Well, um, first of all, of course, language, because English is not my first language. Um, although although like I learned English for several years um, back home, but it's still different. It's not only like the literature meaning, it's like the way people talk, the accent, the dialect and the slogan you use are so different. Like, I've, I've never heard that before. I've never understood what is going on. Um, so I would say language is probably the first, the biggest um, um, barrier. Um, another thing is like culture shock. As I mentioned earlier, like, it's really quiet here. And since, uh, I assume, besides for Hayes, Hayes does not really have a large Asian popular so at the beginning, like, I had to adapt myself to this environment and get used to the way people look at me and people ask me. I know, like, they are curious and they ask from a good reason, I would assume. But, like, the, sometimes the, the way people ask questions is very weird and make me feel uncomfortable. Uh, it gets better, um, but it still happens. This is my fourth year here living in Kansas. Uh, I've never thought it would be this long because I noticed that the biggest difference is the population, of course, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, I grew up in a city with 8 million people. So you see people everywhere. Um, it actually impacts the way you live, the way you transport, commute, basically everything. But like here, in Hayes, at least, we don't have that many people. You don't have to wait for everything. Uh, we drive everywhere here in Hayes, but it's not a, a common thing. In like my hometown, um, basically everyone uses public transportation because with a million people, you don't want to drive. <laughs> uh, I would say there are like good and bad stereotypes. But like one, I noticed that one of the common stereotypes of Chinese people is we eat dogs. That's really uh, not true because um, I cannot talk to everyone, for everyone, excuse me. But like based on my personal experience, uh, I've never had a dog meal. Also, like if you walk into a restaurant in China, at least in my city or the places I've been to, you can't really find like dog meat on the menu. It's like, oh my god, bur dog burger! Like, it's never a big, it's never a thing. I know there are part of China they might eat dogs, but like, not. It's not really a common thing. 
case? Um, it's a good question. I feel like people are really nice here, especially like once I get here at the very beginning, everyone greet to everyone. Like they say hi to everyone when you are walk, walking the st- on the street.、Uh, you're in Walmart. People say hi, ask you what's your day, like how's your day going. That's kind of that's very different than where I come from. Like people don't talk to each other, especially strangers, just like randomly.、Um, another thing I would say that、um, I don't know. Like everything's different. Like food, lifestyle. Transportation culture—it's all different.、Um, specifically, Hayes,、um, sports is a big deal here in Hayes. I know it's like a big deal in、um, small towns for small towns, but like here, Hayes, since we have Fort Hayes, like everyone's so crazy about like tigers. It's very interesting. It's—it's—I've never had this、um, similar experience、um, back home. As I mentioned earlier, this is my fourth year here.、Uh, fortunately, I found my bay <laughs> here.、Uh, we were classmates、uh, for a very, very long time, and then we finally gave it a try.、Uh, and recently, I got engaged. So、uh, I guess it's time to move to the next stage.、Um, I'm graduating in May. I hope I can、um, like find a job. Uh, with my communication and video production、uh, background here in Hayes or、um, Great Bend or anywhere like here in Kansas,、um, so in that case I can live with、uh, the person that I like,、um, just enjoy the life, I guess. Sounds like Yu Chen is in the states for good. We wish her lots of happiness as she moves on to graduation, and that's all we have for you this week. However you got to us today, know that you can always catch us on Tiger Media Network. That's on the web, on YouTube, on Eagle Communications Channel 117, and on Next Tech Channel 102. Be sure to find us one way or another for next week's episode when Haley White will bring us something special. This is Jaron Moss with Live and Local. Tonight we leave you with a close-hand look at the Spring Festival Gala from our from our guest Stephen Sue. From China, also the president of the Chinese Student Scholars Association of Fuhe State University. Like many of Chinese students here, the Spring Festival of 2018, which in China the Year of the Dog, was the first time we had left home to travel and study abroad. Spring Festival is the most important festival in China. On Chinese New Year Eve, people usually get together and celebrate、uh, for the Chinese Spring Gala, and the gala is the most traditional way for people to celebrate. 亲爱的各位来宾，各位朋友，大家晚上好。Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm the host, Alice Gao. I'm Jesse. I'm Caroline. I'm Sirius. I'm Joanna. I'm Simon. After the gala, we have a big meal together, and dumplings are the most traditional food on the table. And every year, we are so looking forward to watching the gala. CSSA is like a big family for the Chinese abroad. I. As the leader of the CSSA, with the help of other members, so.